3. Effective values of AC As the voltage of an AC changes, it also produces a varying power. To name an AC, we have to consider its power. In the following experiment, a light bulb is connected to the two-way switch. First, it is powered by an AC, and then to the DC. The DC voltage is then adjusted so that the light bulb looks equally bright. In this way, we can find the effective value of the AC. Experiment 6B, the effective value of an AC. In this experiment, we will measure the effective value of an alternating current. Connect a light bulb in series with a two-way switch, an ammeter, a battery box and a rheostat. The light bulb and the two-way switch are connected to an AC power supply at the same time. Finally, connect a CRO across the two ends of the light bulb. Set the switch to the AC power supply and set the output voltage to 3 volts. Apply a sinusoidal alternating voltage to the light bulb so that it lights up with a certain degree of brightness. Read the peak-to-peak -peak value of the voltage shown on the CRO screen. Set the switch to the DC power supply. Adjust the resistance of the rheostat so that the light bulb gives the same brightness as connected to the AC power supply. Read the DC voltage from the CRO and the direct current from the ammeter. What is the ratio of the peak value of the AC voltage to the DC voltage? We found from the experiment the ratio of the peak voltage of an AC and the steady DC voltage to give the same brightness and hence the same output power is approximately 1.4 to 1. Indeed, it should be root 2 to 1. In other words, an AC of peak value of 5 root 2 volts will give the same brightness as a steady DC of voltage 5 volts. Note that the AC makes the bulb flashing, but its average brightness was measured and compared with that of the DC. The frequency of AC does not affect its power, and hence does not affect the ratio. But a high frequency will make the flashing less obvious, and so easier for comparison in this experiment. So, an AC of peak voltage 5 root 2 volt gives an average power the same as that of a 5 volt DC. We say that such AC has an effective value of 5 volt, which is also called the root mean square value of the AC. 4. Root mean square values of AC. Using a little bit of mathematics, we can calculate the average power of an AC and find its effective value, or root mean square value. The power produced by an AC is changing with time. The instantaneous power is power P equals I square R, which is the power when a certain current is flowing through a resistor R. As this instantaneous power is changing with time, we need to find its average value in order to compare with the constant power produced by steady DC, given by the equation below. So, if we can find the average of the squares of current, then the equivalent steady DC current given by IDC equals the square root of the average of the squares 
of current. So what does this root means square value of current mean? Let me give a simple illustration here. Suppose there is a simple AC which varies as shown. Positive 1, negative 2, positive 3, positive 1, negative 1. And repeat. Positive 1, negative 2, positive 3, positive 1, negative 1. So that in one period, the squares of current are positive 1, positive 4, positive 9, positive 1, and positive 1. And thus, the average value of the squares of current is 3.2. If each current value lasts for one-fifth of a period, and thus the root mean square current is 1.79a. Similarly, the root mean square value of an alternating voltage is calculated. Example 2. Finding the root mean square value of an AC. In this case, the current has only two values. Each lasts for half a period. Now calculate the squares of current. And then find the average value of the squares of current. The equivalent steady current is called root mean square current, which is the square root of the average of the squares of current. Do checkpoint 2 below.